Hi! So today we're back on the tasty treats again with the applique flowers. We're on to flower number three. So on our little chart or picture here, flower number three is a great big flower. So that's kind of fun to do. Um, a little bit of a folk arty style about this flower. So I'm going to go ahead. I've cut all my pieces out. Um, this one, even though on the drawing here, we can see that this little stem is actually quite um, curvy, so not, not a straight line. However, I still feel that we want to try and center it as much as possible. So I'm just going to do a finger press fold down the center so that I've got something to line up my middle of my block with. And that would also then apply to some of these other shapes for the actual flower. If we did a little fold in those as well, then we more or less get them central and it's quite a good idea to have things reasonably centered it's not absolutely an exact thing but i think somewhere reasonable is quite good so i'm going to go ahead and start peeling off the paper off my shapes ready to position them on so i'm going to pop the stem down first and so in the pattern as i've mentioned before everything is numbered for for the sort of placement order it's more the ironing order than specifically placement because sometimes we need to place some of the other bits so that we know that we're getting the others in the right place. So I'm just popping the leaves under the stem there. It's kind of fun to do all this applique. I really enjoy doing all this. I hope you enjoy it too. Leaf is at a different angle. And then the flower has a little base on it, which can go there, and we want that reasonably centered as well. And then we, did, we need to tuck the yellow one in, the top piece in underneath, but I think to help us do that, it would help to have these in position, but not necessarily ironed in place or anything, because these ones all actually layer the other way, but it's quite hard to get the position of the top one without these to get it all exactly where we want it and that is where we want it, exactly where we want it. It's kind of fun. So this one now has to tuck underneath there and we've got that little centre fold remember so that we can line up our middle and slip that over the top. That's got to come down a fair bit more. These ends here get covered by this one, so we may still need to bring that one down just a little bit more, I think. So we might need to bring the whole flower up in a minute, because now it's got a reasonable gap at the top, and I think I'd like to see it with maybe not quite such a gap at the top. So I'll just lift that whole thing up, just a little bit up to there. too far. Yes, I've gone too far. If there's going to be more of a gap somewhere, you want the more of the gap at the top than at the bottom. So we're probably almost back to where I was. And these, these leaves have the little um, veins on, like the ones that we did last time. So they could be marked on if you wanted to before you start sewing. There's also some little coloured dots that go across the top of this flower here. And again, if you put them reasonably close to that edge, you'll be able to just um, stitch on to straight onto these while you're in that region rather than stopping and starting. It's always a nice idea. I think that's all looking pretty good. I think I've got everything in place. I've got my leaves, I've got my stem, the base of the flower, and the three scallops, and the little dots. So I'm just going to iron those in place now. Everything's looking pretty good. And 
I'll just put my batting behind. This is just a cotton batting that I'm using as a stabiliser, but I find if I iron the block onto it, because it's all cotton, it clings quite well. So that helps hold everything nicely. And so I've got that ready to stitch. I'll just need to do my veins on my leaves and things as I'm going around stitching. So I'll just go to the machine now and start the stitching so that you can just see me getting going on that. I might start on, on the flower so that you can see me going along the little scallop. So I'll start on this red piece just here. It's just a matter of following that edge, nothing particularly hard about it. You can take your time. So I could now go back and come along the orange without stopping and starting. I am going to have to stop and start somewhere, so I'm a little bit inclined to continue on the red for now. But I'll go ahead and finish stitching the block and come back and show it to you when it's done. So I've gone ahead, I've finished doing all the applique stitching on my block. When I came round on the top piece here, I just skipped onto the little blue dots as I went so that they were included. I've done the veins on the leaves. I'm pretty happy with that. One thing I will mention, because I'm using a white background and I'm putting a, a white behind it, but just be careful when you do put something behind, I should have probably said this earlier, that there's no little flecks of threads or other colours because it's going to show through on your white. So you just have to make sure that your batting and the back of your cloth all stay thread free so that it doesn't show so much. And so I'm also just going to show you the back because you can see my stitching because I'm using the dark thread just to give you an idea of where the actual stitching goes because sometimes you can't see it because of the fabrics. So not necessarily amazing but quite clean on the back with the stitching and things so it can be used for all sorts of things. So I think that's a great little block. So that was block three from uh, Tasty Treats and I can just pin it up here so that we can see how it's looking against the others. I think it's looking pretty good with these little guys coming along there. So that's block three done and we'll see you again for block four. Thanks so much.